Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to repair a plate amplifier used in Amphion Impact 400 uh, subwoofer. Uh, here you can see the plate amplifier which is remo removed from the subwoofer. Uh, this is a subwoofer of a friend of mine which he asked me to fix fix for him and uh, the problem was that uh, it was completely dead so the well the power power on LED would work but uh, there was nothing coming out from the from the speaker and uh, I already did some some research on this particular amplifier and I found that the relay which is uh, disconnecting the speaker during switch on and switch off to prevent it from popping it was not switching at all otherwise the otherwise the all the internal world voltages seem to be pretty much okay and uh, I also did some internet research if any other would have such problems but I couldn't find any solutions there what I did find, however, is that uh, this uh, very same plate amplifier is used in other brands as Amphion as well. So at least, uh, at least this uh, Italian brand Bolzano Villetri, this is from a manual of this, this Italian brand shows the shows the diagram of the plate amplifier and it seems to be exactly the same. There was also some uh, US brand subwoofer which uses uh, at least the same amplifier part, perhaps not the same uh, perhaps not the same preamplifier part but the main amplifier was the same. Uh, well, let me put this in a bit different position now. So what we have here is a pretty, uh, pretty straightforward design. Here's a Victor Oil transformer delivering the power. Here is a, this board here. This is the main amplifier board. And uh, this board here contains the Preamplifier and the, uh, the low pass and high pass filters for for the crossover uh, between main speakers and the subwoofer, and it also contains the uh, sense signal input sense for automatic uh, power on and power off the subwoofer based on if there's a audio signal coming uh, or not. And uh, well it's a bit difficult to see here, but the relay to switch uh, the speaker on and off is behind this uh, one toroidal coil. Uh, its uh, contacts are visible here. These two contacts here are the, are the relay coil contacts and uh, this contact is where the signal input is coming and these contacts here switch the output to either power resistors to damp it or to the speaker itself. The speaker connects to these these two terminals here and uh, uh, I found first found out that the uh, relay was not switching at all the high side of the coil uh, is fed from the main voltage from the rectified uh, input power but the low side of the coil is not driven properly uh, it is driven uh, 
uh, some maybe 10 volts lower than the than the high side of the coil which makes the relay to buzz a bit but it doesn't properly switch and uh, at that point I should have figured out to measure measure the low side of the coil with either uh, AC range of the multimeter or then my trusty old oscilloscope because that would have been uh, important clue, clue in fixing, fixing this fixing this amplifier but uh, I didn't figure out that back then so I went a little more little more complex route so uh, I tracked down that the uh, output to drive this coil comes from this uh, PCP module with here uh, it's originally on the other side of the PCB but I removed it for inve investigation and put it on this other side so I have better access to it to measure how it works and uh, I found out that this module here it does have the the power on delay to uh, switch on the relay only after some some seconds after power up to prevent any any noise from the speaker and uh, it also uh, has uh, protection circuits for to uh, disconnect the speaker if there is a fault in the amplifier and there is a DC voltage going to the speaker which would uh, damage it quite soon and it also has a, a kind of overload protection and uh, also found out that this module here even though it's a two-sided PCB containing a lot of transistors and diodes it actually seems to be uh, a pin compatible replacement of uh, of an old uh, neck IC circuit done for this uh, job originally so uh, I actually uh, drew the drew out the circuit diagram of this uh, uh, small PCB to help me to debug why it wasn't switching on the relay properly and here you can see the see the circuit diagram it contains about nine transistors and ten diodes and all kind of passive components it might be that it's drawn directly from uh, from some data sheet or application note of the actual circuit so the original circuit is uh, neck mu pc one one two three seven it's a bit strange that uh, this uh, module has been designed because the original neck circuit is still available but it's probably probably it was cheaper to make it make it separately than than buy the circuit well anyway uh, with the with this uh, circuit drawn and with help of the neck data sheet, uh, I quite soon found out that the overload protection was not tripping, uh, the uh, DC offset detection was not tripping, and uh, this uh, latching function safety circuit was not preventing to switch on the relay and also this uh, AC off detector which is uh, the input that actually uh, drives the relay on A voltage for was fed here about I think somewhere around 4 volts uh, which should be enough but uh, for some reason the circuit was not switching and 
after a short amount of probing I found out that uh, the voltage here even though it was 4 volts DC there was a significant AC component there about 5 volts AC and uh, that was causing the uh, these uh, transistors not to drive continuously but only only uh, some small birds at, at, at that uh, AC frequency 50 Hertz so that was also making that buzzing sound from the relay so that should I should have found that out that earlier and the uh, the circuit which drives this uh, AC of detector input uh, consists of uh, you see, uh, uh, this diode uh, rectifies uh, AC voltage from the transformer and uh, uh, this capacitor here uh, is a tank capacitor at the output to provide a, a steady DC voltage to be fed here and the reason was that this uh, output capacitor original output capacitor shown here was not was not working anymore its uh, capacitance measured with the multimeter was only some some hundreds of nanofarads even though it should be 10 microfarads so it was not not rectifying good at all so I just replaced that one capacitor with uh, uh, 10 microfarad capacitor I used here a tantalum electrolytic capacitor because I didn't have a, uh, aluminum electrolytic capacitor available but it works works just the same so uh, yeah now it's just up to putting this putting this back together I have removed some of the parts for investigation so it's now time to put those back together even though your subwoofer doesn't have the same fault uh, the most probable problem with these, I would guess, is the pretty much all of the electrolytic capacitors because they are uh, they seem to be of quite bad quality. For example, this uh, capacitor here is uh, brand Capxon, which is known to be of of very bad quality. And uh, one example is here. Here are two big capacitors which uh, uh, act as coupling capacitors. If you use the if you use the loudspeaker level inputs and outputs, uh, friend of mine hasn't used these ever. So these two capacitors uh, are never used. But still, you can see that. Uh, the other one of these capacitors has already has a bulge on top of the capacitor so it has uh, it has been broken even if it has not has not been used so probably the quickest and easiest fix for these these kind of uh, amplifiers is just to replace all of the electrolytic capacitors but uh, I prefer to found out what originally was the was the root cause of this problem and maybe maybe also learned something in the process okay thank you for watching